Welcome back guys to the Octave Fever channel. Today in this episode, we're going to take care of the clutch packs. So as some of you may remember, going back way when, when I had the car mapped, I could only get 401 horsepower because the clutches started slipping. So Vince at Self Racing recommended I get some Golf R clutch packs, which can handle more power, handle more torque, and get them fitted and go back for the, another stage of remapping, which we're going to do on the 22nd of February. And I will record this session, guys. I will be there and I will record the dynos and any issues that come up on the dyno. So stay tuned for that video. It's going to be dropping sometime end of February. But in this episode, we're going to get change the clutch packs. We're going to change the flywheel while we're there as well. And we're obviously going to change the oil filter out while we're there for the DSG box. I'm not going to do the chains while I'm here, while the box is off. Chains was only done sort of sort of six or seven thousand miles ago and they're well within tolerance so I'm gonna leave them alone and a new set of chains will go on when I forge the engine at a later date. So leave the chains alone, get the get the DSG gearbox out, put the new flywheel on, put the new clutch packs in and bolt everything back together. What could go wrong? Simple as that. I'm doing it on my drive, I'll record as much as I can. I'm not gonna record the boring stuff and I'll just narrate that out, but all the interesting stuff I'll record and I'll and I'll take you guys through how it goes. I've got my friend Harry coming over because it's a big job and it's also you know very heavy gearbox. So Harry's coming to help me tomorrow. And at the moment I'm just going to jack the car up, get the wheels off, and uh, crack some of the nuts loose, etc. In ready for tomorrow morning. So I won't record that. And I next time you see me will be tomorrow morning when we start taking this gearbox out. Don't forget to stay to the end. Don't forget to like and subscribe. I really appreciate every comment you guys put. It, you know, it makes my day when I see comments there. So don't forget to drop me a comment. I really appreciate it. And I will catch you tomorrow. Have a look at this filthy bitch. I've been driving it to work for the last sort of four weeks, um, twice a week, and uh, obviously, and I went to Wales as well. You know, absolutely performs faultlessly, apart from the obvious gearbox issues. But other than that, it drives absolutely lovely. Drove sort of 300 miles in a day in it, no issues whatsoever. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start by cracking the wheel nuts on the front and also the drive shaft nut while it's down on the ground. Do that for both sides. Then I'm going to jack it up and get up on axle stands and then remove the front end completely. So bumper, crash panel, radiators, the lot. Get it all removed just so we've got plenty of access there to slide the gearbox in and out. Um, and it's not too bad of a job to do so uh, I'm going to do that on both sides and then should be good to go so to actually do the gearbox my plan is essentially to remove the intake pipe here uh, which kind of frees up a lot of room here uh, take this whole front panel off take the front bumper off wheels off uh, drive shafts off from both sides take them out completely so undo the ball joint both sides and get the drive shafts out that should give us enough room to sort of slide in and out probably take the catch can off as well give us a bit more room drain the coolant when this comes off the radiators and the intercooler piping as well and all the intercooler piping will come off and uh, hopefully that give us enough room to drop the gearbox down and slide it out uh, these gearboxes are really heavy um, definitely a two-man job so so that's why I got my friend Harry coming to help uh, tomorrow to do that with me. Uh, I'm gonna get cracking, get these wheels off, get the drive shaft nut undone because um, that's tight as hell. So get that all off and then start getting the front end off. And just like that, we're back. So it's in the morning now. I'm a little bit croaky. It's quite early for me to be up, but I've got the car up now. It's up on axle stands. Got the wheel off both sides and the hub, uh, the drive shaft nut loose. I'm just going to start taking the front end off now just to make it easier give me some nice access to the gearbox um and there's a boost pipe i want to just re-weld as well um because it's got a pinhole in there so i thought i'd just take the front end off take the radiators and everything else off and uh just get better access to the gearbox that way um to sort of save us some some hassle in the long run so we're gonna start cracking on with that now and bring you back when that's finished so I got the front end off now guys, just the bumper, the intercooler pipes and the bolts. So you just need to drop the four bolts here and the other side just to get the front end off and drain the coolant. Harry's gone ahead and done the bolts for the ball joints on both sides. He's just tackling the drive shafts on the other side now. 
and uh, get the front end off very soon. Just need to drain the coolant first and then the whole front end will come off in one piece, fingers crossed. I'll bring you back on when that does that. So guys, got the coolant drain in now, just the bottom radiator hose that I popped off. This is all ready to come off. It's just the four bolts holding the crash bar on. Harry's gone ahead and got this drive shaft off now. As you can see in there, those bolts are now off for the drive shaft. He's just doing the other side as we speak. And then we could do the dog bone mount, then start stripping the stuff off the top of the engine with the gearbox. It's definitely making progress. Yeah, I'll bring you back when, when we've made a little bit more. So I've got this contraption here. It's a six mil heck, uh, Allen key with a 12 inch extension bar, another extension bar, and a, another extension bar to essentially feed into the gearbox hull. And in there is a six mil Allen key. And all that does is removes that shaft from the other side of the gearbox, the other side of the diff. Uh, which enabled me to leave the transfer box in and take the gearbox out. So be very careful when you're doing this. When you're doing this bolt, if you strip it, you're pretty much screwed. So just be extra careful. All right, keep going. Yeah, it's binded up, bound up there. Just trying to move the camera out of the way a little bit. Fingers crossed. So fingers crossed that undid it and not snapped or rounded it. That's quite a violent crack. I think we're in luck. Ask Harry for a rev. Yeah. <laughs> Is that loud? <laughs> oh. Go get in. I'm really having fun this morning. <laughs> yeah, we're only an hour into it, an hour and a half into it. What would you rather be doing with your day? Playing Xbox, PlayStation. <laughs> right now, that should come out. Again. Yeah. <coughs> Put some gloves on. My fairy hands are used to it. Right, so Harry has done the top bolt here, and there's a bolt on the other side as well. The electrical connections here for the positive and for the uh, sort of switch. So this should just pull out now. Harry's going to whack it out now after he's just put on his, his fairy gloves so he doesn't get his hands dirty. Oh, poor boo boo. Easy, easy like that. <laughs> See, he thinks I won't put that in the video, but I will just to embarrass him. Right, so next job for you, Harold, is linkage for the gear linkage. Then, uh, I think that's it from the top. Just need to do the bolts for the gearbox, and I need to get the bolts on the other side. Oh my god, I've literally just taken the cover off here, the heat shield, to basically drop the turbo so we can get to the bolts. 
and look what I found. Look at that huge crack. Golly, I didn't even know about this either. Hmm. Looks like these manifolds aren't as great as I thought. No idea what I'm gonna do about that, guys. I'm just gonna have to order a new manifold. Maybe I could weld it. Um, but I don't know. I don't know whether it'll hold if I weld it or not. It's pretty annoying. Didn't wanna to have to touch that. Oh well, I'm gonna crack on with the job and probably sort that out another day. Um, yeah, <laughs> these sort of things you, you do when you modify cars. But luckily, uh, luckily I took the heat shield off to get the turbo off to because otherwise I wouldn't even known about it. Fuck. All right, now back to the gearbox removal. So I just had to drop the turbo down because we couldn't get access to the bolts for the bevel box. This bolt here, let me try and get you a better angle. So you can see there's a bolt just there and a bolt there. Two bolts, one there, one there. Couldn't get access to that with a turbo. And we've also got this bolt here we need to remove too. So I had to remove the turbo. And to do that, we found obviously the crack. I'm gonna have to weld up. And also this pipe here has completely deteriorated as well. I don't know if you can quite see it. Um, sort of just there. You see where that yellow stuff is? Looks like the heat's got to it. See it split there? Looks like the heat's got to it and uh, it's probably going to be a boost leak. So, a couple of issues I've got to sort out other than the gearbox. But that's how some of this stuff goes, really. I didn't expect to find that crack or the silicon hose. Otherwise, the car's been driving fine. So, didn't expect to see them. But I'm going to have to fix it. So, just going to carry on with the gearbox, get the gearbox done and dusted. And then I'm probably going to have to take that manifold off and either buy a new one or get it welded up so these things happen you know project cars there's always something that goes wrong but you know it's minor in the grand scheme of things so i'm gonna crack and get the gearbox off and uh i can bring it back home when it's something interesting fucking i'll get dug it off say what <laughs> I put it in my little contraption. So guys, what I'm doing is I've followed uh, Humble Mechanics design. So that's the top of the top there. And then put the bolts in through the direction they came through in the gearbox. So these are the bevel bolts and the gearbox bolts. And these are the ones that are just hanging around the bell housing. So just simply wherever it came from, punch a hole into the gearbox from the direction. Actually, that's the wrong direction. So, they come from this side. Just so you know where all your bolts go and what direction in and out they came from. How he's just doing the last bolt for this one. And then we can drop the engine mount here and then hopefully the gearbox will come out. We've done it. It means I didn't have too little oil in there. This is where we'll get all the oil dropping down. Are you ready? There we go. It, we're just gonna let that drain but it's a nice see-through color so that means that you know it's not been there's not like a load of clutch material in there or you know bits of metal from the gears or anything so happy to see that and then we'll just get the gearbox off now so you can sort of cool now, right? right so this is how far we've got so far we've had to remove the subframe from underneath because the bell housing was, uh, because the diff housing, sorry, was hitting on it. 
Uh, this is how far the bevel box we got out. We think that's what's causing us issues, but I mean, the gearbox is mostly out. As you can see, you can see the flywheel there and also the clutch pack. So the clutch packs aren't actually in the flywheel now, so it's good, but it's just that bevel box is holding it from sliding out. So just trying to find out a way of getting it to come out at the moment. Obviously you've got a few jacks trying to get it out. This is the sort of the problem you do when you're doing it on your driveway. Nothing's, nothing's easy, nothing's straightforward. But we'll persevere and we'll get it done. Well, I'm out of breath, guys. <laughs> uh, got it off in the end. Um, and we're just going to replace the clutches now. And I'll, I'll video record this to make sure you guys can see it. But I've got the new clutches in now. The new clutches here, so you've got a new circlip, new front cover, and then the DSG clutch there. So I'll put I'll try and set you up on a tripod and then we'll take it apart and hopefully you guys can see what we've done. So there's a big circlip that goes around here. I'm just gonna undo the circlip away out as that's come out. It's a big one. We don't need that new anymore, we've got a new one. So just put that away somewhere and then we should be able to get this out just like that and i always get a new one of these as well i've got a new one to go on to so i can just discard that and here is our clutch packs just checking for some movement in the in there so we've got like a little indentation cut out there. We're just gonna pry this circlip off here. And then that, we've got a new one of them as well. Right, so now I've taken that circlip off, I should just be able to pull the cover off. And uh, I've got a new one of these as well. It all comes in the kit. So I have to think about re renewing everything. And then take the oil pump drive out. So make sure you put this back in before you uh, before you reassemble everything. But the splines are out the same both sides. So there's not anything directional at all. Just make sure it goes back in before you uh, assemble the clutches again. And that should, B. Oh, I need to take the circlip off here. Right, so we've just got a snap ring here. So this snap ring here is a, a, a precise fitment. In the in the new kit you get, you get a load of brand new um, uh, uh, snap rings, and these are all different sizes. So we have to do some measurements on here to get the right size. Um, I'm just going to get this one off and uh, get, get the new clutches in. This is where a really good tool pays dividends. So I'm gonna throw that one away and then hopefully our clutches should just slide out. Just like that. And what I will do guys, I will take this apart and I will show you the clutches inside as well. So you guys can see, so we can see if there's any damage, etc. and just slide that in like so and then we'll take this off here be me and i'll stay out of your way i can see the way you look at me i'm such a disgrace i never really asked to be brought into the now we need our little tool we've got a clutch tool that i think we put in in here it just holds the basket up from the face so then we can slide. So these actually look the same to be fair. 
the same style. Um, except for that, these are different here. There's a different one there. Whereas this is kind of all the same way. And this has these fatter grooves here. So it just goes to show that they are different. Um, a lot of people said that they're the same, but clearly the clutch material is different. And I think these have an extra disc, an extra steel disc too. Um, so that's the difference in that one. So here's the new ones. So these ones are multi-directional. Uh, the same as this one here. And they actually look the same. So they are, they do look the same. Uh, I don't know if there's any difference there, which is interesting to know. So we'll get this reassembled and then we'll do the circle clip adjustments on there. So I've measured the closest shim here to two millimeters. So I'm just gonna put this on and then I can set up the dial to check the play. Zero up and then pull so that you're taking the slack out of the clutches and the slack out of the input shaft and then measure the value. Okay, so we have the old clutch basket and clutch pack here. Uh, so I'm just gonna strip it down and uh, look for any issues that we might have had with the clutches, any potential slippaging or anything like that. So as you get some screwdrivers and pop these clips off, just pop this off and then we can just start inspecting the clutches. So the idea with this uh, clutch pack is actually so if the, if the basket itself is in good condition, I'm gonna order a set of, uh, sort of uprated clutches um, so that I can actually put into this. And then when eventually the engine goes forged, I can just put this in um, with it already built for to handle the more power. But for now, I'm just gonna inspect all the clutches and then we'll see whether we found any issues so far. So just gonna remove the two cases. And there's no issues with any of these that I can see. No, they look absolutely fine. So just pull these clutches out. So this is the small clutch. So we'll just pull this out and then inspect them individually. So that's the whole clutch basket, all of them there. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six steel discs there. And then the top plate here. And then just looking in here, the bearings feel nice. Yeah, all good. Everything looks good from that perspective. So I'm just gonna go ahead and get this top, the bigger clutch off. Okay, so I've got the smaller clutch pack here. I think this one is first, third, and fifth. So I'm just gonna take a look and see whether any of them are worn. This is just a fun plate cover. Uh, you've got a nice groove around here and, and like a kind of burn mark, maybe that's oil burning. Um, and some heat spots here. You can quite make that on camera. A couple of heat spots here and there. Uh, and this is seems okay nothing seems to be too different wrong here ah but notice the darkness of this layer compared to this layer i think that's what it's meant to look like this sort of a lighter brown 
not so dark. Let's move on into the clutch pack. Yeah, there's definitely heat and uh, slippage and war, war wounds going on here. Both sides, there's another little patch there. Oh, this side's dark as well. Both dark. So this is probably our issue where they started to sort of glaze over. Yeah, as you can see, there's heat patches all the way around here now. Sort of getting worse as we're getting into it. You might guys see that. So, yeah, it's a dark as well. Probably our issue where they've started to glaze over. And yeah, this is scored as well. I can't feel anything in the fingertips, but it's just sort of heat soaked or heat, you kind of like heat hardened up with the heat. Heat hardened or what heat treated or whatever they call it. And it's the same, it's a little bit lighter here than it is on the other side. But, oh uh, look, got a big heat mark here. It's hard to tell on camera because it's quite, it's quite bright, but you've got a nice heat mark here and a few more here. So that's not good. Oh, look at that. Lovely heat marks there. I wouldn't say this this clutch probably wasn't doing much to be fair. Though that uh, friction pad and steel disc. Yeah, no catastrophes on that really. And this is the last plate. Got a lot of little heat marks on there and burning oil marks on the other side. So that clutch pack is, uh, I think it was like a culprit. I uh, would like to just see what this clutch pack looks like. Uh, Cause I think that's how it's meant to be. This kind of shade uh, versus let's say the last clutch pack and just sort of like compare them. Yeah, they don't feel any different. I don't think we're gonna know, but should go there we go so i think that was our cause of our clutch pack issues was the that was the uh sort of the heat scoring and heat treated of the metal parts so you could do the other one so i think this one is second uh fourth and sixth so we've got some heat going on here uh, on the outside which would have been where the ring, ring sat uh, so let's have a look how it goes. So no heat spots on that cover. You can see sort of where it's been, you know, the clutch has been gri gripping, but no heat, heat marks. That looks good. Turn that around. Nothing on there. Nothing on there. Looks good. Good. This side looks a bit darker, but I don't see any issues. And you can just see that it's slightly worn. Um, I can't feel anything there, but you know that would have been the original colour. And then you can see how it's kind of like maybe glazed over. Maybe that's our problem. Is you know, I heard that if you the clutch packs are glazed over from just sort of sitting in traffic um that's what can happen and that's what the symptoms i had with it sort of like you know not being able to engage properly because the friction material and stuff is sort of glazed over so i don't see any major issues with this clutch i see more issues with the other one than i did with this um but there you go that's the uh, clutch packs sort of dissected for you and then hopefully we'll get a new set of racing clutches to go in here and uh yeah, that will be for when we go forge engine. And that's it. So guys, I'm just gonna split this video up here. It was getting way too long, it was nearly an hour long. So I'm gonna split the videos up. I'm gonna post them a couple of days apart um, and it'll be part one, part two of this. I've done some driving in the car and it's all looking good. So stay tuned for episode two on this one. And don't forget to like and subscribe and all that good stuff. And I'll catch you on the next one.